Well, welcome back, Gideon's Tactical Crew. Thanks for joining me on another Blade review, particularly a Spyderco. It has been a long time since we have seen a Spyderco here in the collection, on the channel, me carrying and using it, like a new one, I mean, I, I use several of my uh, Spydercos and we will see some competitive options in Spyderco as well as some others here throughout this video. Uh, and I don't really know why, except for I guess just some of the designs just haven't really connected with me as of late. But when I saw that this uh, was available, came back on the market, when I'm making this video, they are available uh, over on Blade HQ. There are a few on Amazon. I will have links to the, the affiliate networks I partner with. Always appreciate when you guys use those hyperlinks when it does make sense to make a purchase. The stretch two in K390. K390, the stretch to better blade shape. Uh, so the stretch, the original stretch to, um, has been in my collection for a long time. I really enjoy it. I actually had it way back in the day, sold it off back when I was flipping tools just so I could make more content way back in the very early days of Gideon's Tactical and then bought it a few years ago and I love it. It stayed in the collection, used it regularly uh, and there's a lot of reasons for that that we'll dive into today, but one of the big hangups for me personally is just the blade shape. Now it's it's got an excellent sweep on the lower half, full flat grind, but I mean that, that looks like a, a extinct flightless bird. It's kind of like a dodo, is what it looks like to me, and just visually never connected with me. Performance wise, always did. This is the VG10 version. So when a while back, they kind of modified the blade shape. I wanted to get an updated version. And then I saw the K390. I just didn't jump on it when it was available. Now it is available again when I'm making this video. And if you're watching it, you know, six months, years later, uh, hang tight. Hopefully they will, you know, if it's out of stock, I mean. Um, and I was super stoked. Not only because the blade shape to me is way more just visually, uh, aesthetically pleasing. And that is part of a tool, right? I mean, if it, if it looks like a freaking dodo bird, are you gonna carry that all the time? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. You tell me. Leave a comment below, I'd love to know your thoughts. But uh, immediately, just vision, even if, even if this was VG10, I would've picked this up and would've let this one probably go by the wayside. Uh, the fact that it has K390 that we're gonna talk about here is just mind blowing uh, and really cool for the value of what you're getting. So we'll jump into a few aspects. I mean, excellent deployment, that thumb hole. Always enjoyed using that from Spyderco. Have never had an issue with it. You can slow open, you can reverse flick. I can't do that one very well. I'm not very good at that. I know some of you guys are like wizards at it. For me, I usually shove my thumb right in there and whap, just flick that blade right open. Now I have here, we're just doing, I'm doing this kind of like on the fly. Yeah, that's what I thought. About three and a, so still about three and a half inches on the overall blade length. And then um, when you run it up against that, yeah, three inches even on the actual cutting edge. Now, this is part of this that you'll notice compared to like the paramilitary two, some of those other ones, is the thickness behind the spine here. That's slightly less than an eighth of an inch thick all the way back there by the gym, according to my caliper. So whereas the paramilitary is gonna be somewhat thicker back there and other spider codes, some other spider codes are gonna be thicker behind the stock there, meaning that this is a, an insane slicer with that full flat grind, excellent edge geometry, which is what you want in a blade like this. So precision cutting made in Seki City, Japan, which is definitely different than made in China. So really, really well done in that regard. Now, the K390, now you may see already some staining there on the tool. It is uh, a carbon steel, so it's not gonna be that rust resistant. You're gonna get a patina pretty quick on it. I live in a low humid environment. If you're in a high humid environment, you know, it's something definitely to consider compared to like M390 or something else like that. But this K390, is in the family of M4 Steel, Maximit, Rex, uh, you know, the, all those type of steels that are out there, it, it's in that family. And what you're actually gonna find is on edge retention, it's a V8 
with a supercharger. It's actually gonna have slightly even better edge retention than M4, if possible. Uh, that, that's pretty wild. So that is excellent and it's got a decent toughness. Now M4 will be tougher in this family of that I just listed. Maximant usually having the best edge retention. Again, obviously when properly, you know, at the right Rockwell, right heat treat, all that stuff obviously needs to line up. And I'm seeing that with Spyderco. Spyderco always tends to do an excellent job with their, their steels. I've never really had an issue with any of their heat treats, but um, so that is just insane. So the edge retention is bananas on this and you're gonna get decent, uh, um, what's it called, toughness, and it will surpass a lot of stainless steels like M390 that may be out there. Um, so that's excellent, as long as you're willing to put up with fighting rust, maybe oiling it every once in a while. For me, it does not matter. I, I'm a user, I use my tools. So this is not like in some sort of case collection. I've already put it through the ringer here. Uh, and it has just super surpassed my expectations and I'm just so pleased with the blade shape, the profile, uh, the capability, and then the steel that is chosen on it in rotation with this, I don't know what we would call this, color. I love the color, it's unique. It's not, you know, it's, it's not like the teal, I guess, on my lightweight Manix but it's not like blue, it's not green. So, I mean, it's just a very cool color there. You got that 3D, you know, multi-directional texture all through there, the lock back, blacked out pocket clip on either side, completely ambidextrous. Now, something that you're gonna note that I like is, you know, they're, they're, these are pins and you're, they're not removable on, say, the Spyderco Manix 2 lightweight. These are screws, so you can disassemble if you need to do maintenance, wanna clean it out, just see how the tool works, you can do that. So that's a nice touch, I like that, and it sets it apart from some of Spyderco's other blades. Now, one thing that I really like about the stretch over, say, the Delica, the Endura, and Della is that this is gonna be a wider handle, so this is actually a more ergonomic handle for use with my large size hands than those tools that I just listed. Now it will take up more real estate in the pocket than those tools, like width wise, top to bottom. Those will be narrower by a little bit, but ergonomically, if you were gonna hand me this or one of those others that I just listed, I would prefer this. The ergos are just excellent. Uh, there's a reason why the Spyderco founder, this is one of his favorite designs, meaning the stretch series, uh, when, and one of the um, first designs that Spyderco came out with way back in the day. And he, he just really seemed to like this profile. I, I tend to agree. Well milled handle right there, steel liners inside. So you've got some structure and some density behind that. Nice little pad right there where the pocket clip will rest. Now, I, I, it doesn't need to be a loop over deep ride. I mean, that would be nice, but it doesn't have to be. It could have come up though. They could have put this screw back here made that part of the pocket clip, still giving you enough to pinch, pull, do all that stuff, do the linear hole down there. It, it's a pretty high ride. I mean, you're gonna get at least over an inch out there. So not the best. The positive is it's very easy to pull out of your pocket with gloves on, you know, quick deployment stuff, but it, it's gonna be pronounced for sure in the pocket. And then just a really smooth drop. And then that excellent jimped and thumb ramp choil. I have no problem with Spyderco choils as long as I'm not forced into using them. I do not have to use it to get full purchase. Some of Spyderco's designs, you are basically shoved into having to use it to get full grip. I don't like that. So giving me the option is dope and I love that, but I don't have to use it. And so I can really get up, choke, do what I need to, and then I can back up and I don't need to use it. I would say it's probably about 75% of the time I don't even use the choil, but it's there depending on the activity and the type of cut I'm about to do. So excellently done, zero complaints. And the best part as we run into competitive options, now this version, if you still, you know, you like that for some reason, or you just want to save some money, but you like everything else I'm talking about. I mean, the profile outside of just the shape is gonna be identical. VG10, these are still like 90 bucks maybe. This guy is $150, guys. Right now when I'm making this video, 150 bucks. It's a basic designing lockback. You know, it's not got all these like frills and everyone's doing crossbar locks now, blah, blah, blah. But for $150, just to give you perspective, here's the M4 steel version of the bailout from Benchmade, American made. 
Uh, M4 steel, again, slightly tougher, not quite as, ed like the edge retention between the two will be slightly better on the Spyderco, uh, which is just wild that I'm even saying that. Aluminum handle scales, a crossbar lock, deep rise, you know, like all the stuff. But we're talking about $270 for this blade. That is a lot of money. And it is a Tanto. Just some people just aren't down with Tantos. You're actually gonna get very similar kind of profile there. Uh, edge length is almost identical. Um, very slight. This is also going to be very slicey because of how thin it is behind the edge here. The stock is 0 0.09, so it's actually even thinner back here. Um, so that that is an example of just like it, this is basically almost half the cost of this Benchmade, and you're going to get actually better edge retention, slightly reduction in um, toughness. So just some food for thought there. About uh, 170, you can get the Spy version, CPM. Uh, SP, yes, uh, Spy 27. It's in the family of uh, S30V, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I researched that. But I think, so this is like a stainless, not gonna have the edge retention, but will definitely be more rust resistant than what the stretch has. Um, almost the exact same blade length, choil dimensions, you know, things like that. Got that ball bar bearing lock, so if you like that idea, but you don't wanna spend $300 almost on a Benchmade, there's that option at like 170. But that just gives you the idea of like the power behind the steel that's on the K390 is awesome. Now, um, if you just want something way more brute force with S35VN made in Taiwan, there is obviously the uh, 8010 lockback, G10 handle scales, frame lock, or excuse me, not frame lock, frame. Look at the frame on that. I believe that's three or uh, 0.16 on the thickness back there. I mean, it's it's a monster with a saber grind. This is not going to slice anywhere near like this. Uh, S35VN steel, good steel, nowhere near the edge retention, but more rust resistant. Obviously, this would be a great outdoor folder. You do get a dedicated choil that you can totally use with that, and about the same blade length, like double the weight though. Um, and this is going to be about 150 as well, sometimes even a little bit less for that model. So those are just some perspective ideas for you guys to kind of consider. But if you have been thinking about the stretch, I love it. And this K390 is just like epic, like beyond belief. I love the steel. I love the blade shape now. And I'm going to be retiring my other version. I'm going to be retiring this guy. That's me, guys. That's the stretch two update in K390. Let me know your thoughts. Appreciate you coming over today and spending some time with me talking about blades. And uh, I encourage you to leave uh, that comment, smash that like button, and subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.